ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Bomb Sports Breakfast Bulletin here on Real Bomber Sports. This is my sort of news and vlog kind of thing. I will try and make this daily, but I'm rubbish enough at uploading to a schedule as is. So let's keep this to weekly for now. Real Bomber Sports uh, day is mostly Tuesday, so I'm uploading these on a Tuesday. And this is timed quite well, because today being the Tuesday after the Daytona 500, and I've got a topic to talk about. To be honest, we could picked from a whole load of topics based on that race. It was an astonishingly good race, except for the final half lap. Basically, on the final lap, there was a big wreck in the midway through the field. Austin Dillon clipped Jeff Gordon, which meant all the Jeff Gordon fans hated Austin Dillon, oh my god! Uh, the front ten or so were just on their own, and we were going, right, are they going to throw the caution? They're going to throw the caution? They're going to... No, they haven't thrown the caution! Here we go! This is going to be the epic finish to this race! Oh, they threw the caution anyway. And so we, they just kind of coasted home and yay, Joey Logano winner. And I'm not slagging off Joey Logano at all. I think he was, he, his car was really good and he deserved to win the race, so it's certainly. Did you see how good his car was in the final 20 laps or so? He was just like, this is my race, I am winning this race. But that's not gonna stop me saying that the, the finish was kind of terrible. NASCAR have gone to this huge thing of saying, no, we want these races to end under green if possible. So in NASCAR Spring Cup, there's three attempts for a green-white checker. Now, uh, the problem is uh, with this rule where the white flag basically ends the race. As soon as the white flag drops, it's like we're playing by regular rules again. The green-white checker rule just goes, so the next flag ends the race. So if there's a crash, that's it. Caution, blah, blah, blah. I know there's safety concerns. I absolutely understand that. Apparently, Carl Larson took a pretty big hit in that wreck on the back straight. There were still cars behind the wreck, so obviously you've got to try and slow them down and get the safety workers out on track as quick as possible. I understand that. I'm fine with that. I totally get it. The, the problem is that NASCAR, with the green-white checker rule, they've got to follow this through to the nth degree because if you amp up a race like that, especially the race was so good. It was like, okay, this is calm. The middle bit's calm. We're building up now. We're building up now. Lap 100. Yep, yeah, we're here. And they're just riding around. And now they're starting to get more impatient. Lap 150. Yeah, they're starting to get too wide. Now they're starting to get... Lap 175. They're going three wide. 25 cars are three wide. What the hell is this? This is crazy. Green, white, checker. Oh my God, this is going to be amazing. This is going to be amazing. You amp it up so much and it's just about to finish it. No. <laughs> And it's just gone. You can understand why people were frustrated. And you can understand why people came back with, well, good luck for you, but safety first. Yes, totally, I get safety first. Especially after what happened the day before with Kyle Busch. And please, get well soon, Kyle Busch. I mean, I'm not really your biggest fan before, but to be honest, that's out of the window now. I want you back on the track as soon as possible, mate. It's very easy to whine about it and moan about it. Blah, blah, blah. But actually, I and a few other people ended up speaking about this. Uh, and I've got some ideas as to how we can tweak the green white checker rule to try and avoid, uh, at all possible, races finishing on the yellow. Because if the green white checkers there already, we're already trying to avoid finishing on the yellow. Let's take further steps. Now, the, the, the main idea, or the first idea I got, was from actually a guy I know called Cody Figure. He came up with this idea, and I think it's brilliant. It would only really work on plate tracks, but it's basically taken from what other series do on road courses, as in Formula One, touring cars, V8, whatever. It's the idea of local yellows or sector yellows. So you sometimes hear in Formula One, there's a yellow out in this sector. So you've got to slow through there. Obviously at Bristol, <laughs> that really wouldn't work. Where sector one? Oh, pretty much the whole lap. But at a plate track, they're long enough. And you could probably do this at tracks like Michigan and Indianapolis as well and Pocono. I think you could do this. You can have certain sectors of the track. So, for example, on with with Sunday's example, you can have a, an idea where the leaders are now in sector three, which is turn three and four and the finish line. That's green. They can keep racing. They're fine. But the back straight is under yellow. So anyone the other still on the back straight or coming round, yellow, yellow, back it down. Slow. We're yellow in that sector. We slow down. So I think. That would have worked great for yesterday, because any cars coming through, and everyone has radios now, all drivers have radios, so you can't tell me that drivers wouldn't slow down. I mean, everyone slows down when there's a huge wreck in front of them anyway. You don't just go, wee, straight through the flying cars and the smoke and the bits of bonnet and hood and everything. Uh, and I think what frustrated people as well yesterday is that it's, it's fairly inconsistent. We've seen, you know, for NASCAR to go, well, it's safety, you've got to slow down everyone behind the wreck. Yeah, but you've let them race back to the line before when there's big wrecks. I'm thinking 2007 Daytona 500 finish. Okay, they wrecked out of turn four, slightly around the lap. 
2010 Daytona 500, they wrecked in almost exactly the same spot. They let them race back to the line. Saturday, in the Xfinity Series race, they wrecked in all... I mean, Carl Larson hit, uh, I think it was Ross Chastain, and they almost hit the same wall that Carl Busch had just hit. But they could let him keep going. And in fact, there was a point where you thought Brad Keselowski was like, hey, they're going to throw the caution, I've won. No, uh, no, we're, we're green. Oh, no, here comes Ryan. Oh, I've lost the race. No oh, dear. The, just the night before, you let him race back. And then on Sunday, no, safety. No, we've got we to yellow flag the race and ruin the end. So there's one idea, the idea of local yellows. The second idea, and this was one that was put forward by Ray Dunlap, actually, the, uh, the, truck, the, the truck series uh, pit reporter. He said afterwards, he said, look, that, that was kind of lame at the end. Why not take the ARCA rule? Now, I never thought I'd be in a scenario where ARCA does something better than NASCAR. But when their race is the cleanest in all the speed weeks, yeah, something's, <laughs> something, something's weird there. We're in the twilight zone now. But he said, well, they have unlimited green white checkers. They just take it to the nth degree. They go, well, we're going to finish this race under green. If you keep crashing, mm, tough. As far as I know, they don't have the uh, white flag ends the race rule. Because that's what's slightly bizarre. You know, you've got two laps. That's two laps to, to finish a race on the green white checker. And then as soon as the white flag thinks, that's the final lap. This is suddenly the final lap. No going back now. It's like all of a sudden your lives are gone. So it's like, hang on. You're in the green white checker and then you suddenly go back to playing my normal rules on the final lap anyway? This is just a little tweak. That it... And it's a tweak that is only really needed for the plate tracks, because it's very rare. Even on short tracks, you don't really get that many wrecks on a green white checker on a short track. You just sort of string, string out and the front guys will bump and biff each other off. Uh, on the intermediates, not really. Everyone sort of packs out. But on the plate tracks, where everyone's jammed together and everyone's going for the win and everyone's going crazy, that's going to happen. That's why I don't blame Austin Dillon. It could have been anyone in that front back. The, the fact that they ran 30 or 40 laps... Three by three by three by three by three. It was like Noah's Ark on open day. The fact that they ran that at 200 miles an hour without wrecking, I am very impressed. So the fact that one of them ended up finally crashing on the very final lap. Yeah, I think he did a good job, boys. But no, I think there are a few little tweaks that we can run with here that may be able to avoid this sort of damp squib finish. Because as I say, I mean, if you go with the green white checker rule, surely you've got to follow it through and try your very hardest to go for a green white checker. Can't get to the point where it's like, oh, we're trying to finish this race on the green. Now the white flag's out. Oh, so there's cracks. Oh no, we're finishing on a caution anyway. Because as we saw yesterday, it just, ugh, you take these as suggestions for how to do things better I in the future. So maybe for the next time. <laughs> I sound like I'm directly talking to Brian France. Hey, Brian France, listen to some random bloke on YouTube from Britain who... <laughs> To, to tell you how to do your sport better. And let me know if you think these ideas are any good or if they're absolute dross. Let's see if we can roll with this. I'm going to try and do vlogs more regularly. They may not even run to a schedule. Why not? I need all sorts of motivation just to stick to schedules and upload videos. So I'm going to try and fire them as much as possible at you. Um, so let me know what you think of these Greenwood Checker tweets. Do you have your own ideas? I bet you do. I bet you do. The NASCAR community always has their own ideas. Some of them good, some of them utterly stupid. But I want to hear, I want to hear all of them, and I want to hear if you think my ideas are good or utterly stupid. So I'll see you next time, and remember, bring the noise.